I know, I know, this is not definitely a less known title, and it's certainly not an indie game, but well, a good guy Konami handed me a key and said, make video about it, check what's changed and see what's been upgraded. Science I'm fan of the series, I figure out why not, I even prepared myself for this video. So here it is. <laughs> I'm not going to explain what the Castlevania series is, after all, the Metroidvania genre gets half of its name from it, but what exactly is the Castlevania Dominus Collection? That's another story. The collection includes all the Castlevania titles originally released on the Nintendo DS. In fact, there are four titles here, Castlevania Dawn of Sorrow, Portrait of Ruin and Order of Ecclesia. You might be wondering about the four titles since only these three were officially released on the DS. Stick around and you'll find out soon enough. I've mostly been playing Portrait of Ruin because I originally finished Order Ecclesia and Dawn of Sorrow on the DS. All the games in this collection have been ported to platforms like Steam, Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series, with several improvements that weren't available when they first launched. For example, you can save your progress whenever you want, and you can switch between different regional versions of the games – US, Japanese and even Korean. You can play one game, save and seamlessly jump into another. There is even a rewind feature to quickly fix mistakes, but it doesn't make things easier if you use it. And if you don't want to, no one is forcing you. You can still play these games as they were originally intended. Just good old fashioned git good. Each title also comes with additional modes to unlock, giving you more ways to enjoy your favorite parts of the series. Since all three main titles in this collection were released on Nintendo DS, which featured a dual screen setup, and Order of Ecclesia heavily used touchscreen controls, the developers reworked these mechanics to make the games accessible for everyone. You can use a mouse or PlayStation touchpad to mimic the original experience, if you want to. Given that in 2024 even your refrigerator has more power than a Nintendo DS, this game runs smoother and without the hardware limitations of the old device. In the main collection settings, you can even adjust how the dual screen layout is displayed on your modern screen. At first, the side by side screen setup felt odd, but once I got used to it, I loved the convenience. The map and other key information are always on screen right when you need them. That said, the map screen was a bit small on the original console, so sometimes I had to squint a bit to find the passage I missed. Let's talk about graphics. These games were originally designed for the DS, with a tiny resolution of 256 by 192 for each screen. Stretching that resolution to modern screen size sounds like a disaster waiting to happen, but here you will notice a graphical overhaul that keeps the games looking good, even 2K or 4K displays. Since the game was originally made for a portable device, the collection is perfect for the Steam Deck, allowing you to enjoy your old school Metroidvania anywhere, whether at home or on the go. It's like bringing portable games full circle back to bank portable again. As I mentioned earlier, there is a fourth game including in this collection. And what's more, it's available in two versions making it technically five games in the bundle. Enter Haunted Castle and Haunted Castle Revisited. Haunted Castle is the first official installment in the Castlevania series, released so long ago that it doesn't even carry the Castlevania name. Originally an arcade game from 1987, Haunted Castle is infamous for being incredibly hard and unbalanced and downright rage including. But hey, it was designed to make you keep popping in coins, thank you capitalism. Now, in addition to this frustrating classic, we also have Haunted Castle Revisited, a remade version of the original. This rework retains the charm of the original, but it's more balanced, visually updated and features improved audio. Fans of this series will likely appreciate it, as it's clearly made with them in mind. As fun myself, there is always that one moment in this game that I just love. The Castlevania Dominus Collection is the third installment in the Castlevania collections. The first was the Castlevania Anniversary Correction, which bundled together all their NES, SNES and Game Boy titles. Then came the Castlevania Advance Collection featuring Game Boy Advance games, along with Dracula X or Rondo of Blood if you prefer. 
Dominus Collection brings another generation of Castlevania titles back into the spotlight and it was crafted with the right amount of respect for the source material. Sure, it's designed to lap into your nostalgia and get long-time fans to spend a little more cash, but it also serves a great entry point for new players, potentially growing the fanbase even further. I'm happy to see Konami treating its legendary projects with the respect they deserve. Some might complain, why aren't these games remade in modern 2.D art style? Or these aren't so many other innovative metroidvanias out there now? But let's be honest, without Castlevania, you wouldn't have these newer games. Plus, there is just something about this gothic vampire themed story that keeps you coming back for more. These games aren't 40 hours epics, nor are they artificially stretched out. They are replayable because of their simplicity. In my opinion, Castlevania games thrive on its straightforward, effective concept hero with a mission. And while the stories in these games are often simple due to the limitations of the time, the series longevity makes them feel like chapters in a much larger saga. At the heart of it all, stop Dracula from being resurrected, kick some ass of his minions and save the world. If you want to jump into some nostalgic vibes or try your hand at taking down Lord Dracula or any other psycho trying to revive him, Konami has provided a link to the Steam page for the collection. Link is below in the description. Besides videos like this, I also have a mission. A mission to showcase lesser known games on the market. I often cover small indie games projects, so if you'd like to join me on this adventure, don't forget to subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching and see you later. Bye.